Well, good evening, friends. Sorry for the delay there. We were having just a few uh, bugs getting uh, our Vespers up and running, but I hope you're able to see and, and hear us now. Um, as we come together this evening, first of all, I wanted to show you this uh, mural that our kids did. Nikki uh, helped put this together. If uh, I knew you couldn't be here in the building to see it. Maybe you've seen a picture of it uh, on our Facebook page, but I wanted to just uh, show it off some more. I, I think it's I think it's a great thing that connects our kids, connects our church, and reminds us uh, of, of what we're doing here as we come together as Christ's church in these times virtually and as we do the work of Christ uh, in our homes and communities even now and in the future. Uh, as we come together for this time of prayer this evening, I have a few things I want to talk to you about before we uh, get into some scripture and a time uh, for prayer. Uh, first, I hope you'll join us uh, for worship this Sunday again via Facebook, uh, YouTube, or if you're still receiving our e email link. Uh, we'll continue to do uh, worship this way for the rest of this month. Uh, that's through the 31st. Uh, uh, this Sunday, though, is a little different and special. Uh, this Sunday, May 17th, we're, I'm inviting you to join us in communion at home. Uh, that means uh, there will be a time in the worship video for you at home to join with us uh, or to join in the service, to join with one another, uh, to, to partake in communion. Uh, now, that doesn't mean you have to have grape juice or the right kind of bread or anything at home. Whatever you have, whatever you can bring to set your table, your family's table, uh, will be enough to join us uh, for communion. And, and I want to invite you to share whatever your family's table, your household table for communion looks like here on our Facebook page. Uh, just so as we all come together to take communion and share in the Lord's Supper with one another, that we can witness the various ways we do that. So I invite you um, on this coming Sunday or whenever it is that you may join with us in worship through uh, our Williams Worship on the Web that you will uh, share with us the ways that you are um, sharing communion together in your household. Uh, now, I, I know one of the things that's probably on a lot of your minds right now as businesses are reopening, I've seen some of you out in restaurants uh, through pictures you share on social media, maybe you're finally getting your hair cut, doing those sorts of things. Uh, and I know as uh, Governor Ivey has uh, released new guidelines for reopening the state that some of you have questions about well what are we going to do reopening the church well uh, I, as I said earlier I want to remind you that we are doing uh, virtual worship our online worship for the rest of this month and there are a number of reasons uh, for that and, and I'll talk about those in a minute uh, but this coming Sunday I'll be meeting with the deacons uh, here to discuss uh, a, a reopening plan and and I want to share with you just a few pieces of that plan as I have them now some of them will be tweaked uh, especially as we we talk about this as we come together to discuss how we'll do this in the coming weeks how long it will last and and whatever sort of revelations take place over these next uh, weeks as we prepare for this reopening um, so like I said I'll be meeting with the deacons this Sunday to talk about that plan and and here's some points of that. We will reopen for worship on June 7th, uh, most likely with two services meeting here in the CMC to allow space for social distancing. Um, this will give us plenty of time uh, uh, to coordinate uh, how many people will be able to accommodate and will be able to accommodate in each service. Uh, we will be discussing how we'll do that, how to determine who comes to which service. Uh, most likely your family's deacon will be in contact with you to see uh, what service would you be most comfortable coming to if you were to come back to church with us. And then we'll begin to sort of shape and, and maybe even adapt some of those times uh, for the number of people who are able and, and wanting to come to worship. Uh, this uh, time frame will also give our daycare enough time to find their rhythm in their own use and cleaning of the building. Um, and basically, so we're not creating more work for us, for them, nor are we creating more liability issues for either of us. Our daycare will be reopening next week to, uh, at, at, under the guidelines proposed by the governor and state. 
And so um, we want to be sure we're respecting them, giving them uh, the chance to find their rhythm in doing those things as we share space uh, together. When it comes to what we'll be doing for worship on June 7th, uh, there are a number of things I just want to go ahead and make you aware of so you can be thinking about these things uh, as we prepare to come back together. Uh, like I said, we'll be having worship in the CMC and uh, for a number of reasons. One, again, it's a larger open space so that we can uh, practice social distancing a bit better in that space. It's also uh, a space with hard level surfaces uh, that will be easier to clean and disinfect instead of, say, carpet and, and the fabric on the pews. As we tried our best to, to you know, disinfect and clean between uh, services. We'll be limiting access points into the church at that time and, and probably going to ask you to try uh, to either do one of two things. Either park here in the rear of the church by the glass doors and making sure you leave space for those who need it most uh, to get. If you, can, if you can park in the front and walk around, that'd be great. Uh, but this will be the entrance we'll be using by the uh, glass doors here in the rear. Uh, and as needed, as time progresses or as we see other alternatives, we'll be uh, uh, adding additional interest, entrances to be opened. Uh, in that time, and I'll remind you of all this stuff, and again, this could change even between now and Sunday or when we do make some more official announcements about this. Um, if a hallway or area is closed off, uh, we'll ask you not to enter that area. Again, that's probably going to be out of respect and safety for our daycare, uh, and this will help us to more sort of easily clean and disinfect between and after services to know where people have been, where people haven't been. We will respect uh, social distancing during these services. We'll place chairs uh, in groups for immediate families and households, uh, and those groups will be placed at a safe distance uh, from each other. And of course, as we do this, uh, we'll probably let more people in. We'll begin maybe to decrease this provided that Infection rates are going down, and we feel that we can do this in a more uh, safe and gradual manner. Uh, but just be aware that we'll, we'll figure this out. We're all going to be figuring this out as, as we go along. I'm going to encourage you to, to wear a face mask or covering if you have one. Um, this is a very real sign not to show that, that I'm afraid. If I wear a mask, I don't wear a mask to say, I don't want to catch what you have. I wear a mask to say, if I'm a asymptomatic carrier of this disease. I certainly don't want to pass it on to anyone, especially anyone who's vulnerable. And so I would encourage you, if you have one, to wear them. We're not going to obviously enforce that, but uh, I would encourage it in following the CDC guidelines, especially uh, if there are any times when social distancing may be difficult. Now, wearing a mask also brings me to probably one of the more harder things to, to think about and discuss as we talk about re-entry, reopening into worship. Uh, over the last week, I've been reading an awful lot from an awful lot of sources I trust and know personally about singing in worship. And one of the, one of the things that most everyone is saying is singing is about the most, um, not, I don't want to say dangerous, but it's the mo most prolific way to spread the virus should anyone have it. You've heard of uh, cases even in our own state where choir practice was what uh, spread the disease the most and the fastest. So we'll be finding some unique and creative ways uh, to do worship. I'll be talking with Pat and Linnell, I hope, in the coming days as we uh, discuss that. They've been doing a, a great job recording these things from home uh, and sending them to us. I especially like the parts where Pat's face isn't showing. Um, if you're watching, Pat, that was just for you. Um, but no, I, I, we'll be coming up with some creative ways uh, to carry forth in worship so we can all experience that together. Um, we will have hand sanitizer placed at, at you know, entrances and exits. Uh, there will be ushers or maybe some of our deacons assisting with seating. Uh, for, so, for those of you who, who have attended enough of, say, our funeral visitations, uh, I'm, I'm sort of thinking something like that, where we'll be sort of guiding folks in to where they will sit to help kind of keep that distance so everyone feels safe and everyone feels comfortable uh, returning to church, or those who feel comfortable will feel safe uh, returning to church. And that will be both entering and exiting the worship space. Um, with that in mind, we'll aim to keep these services a bit shorter uh, for a number of reasons. Some include, you know, it'll still help reduce risk 
Uh, it'll create more time for us to clean and disinfect should we need to, uh, those sorts of things. And then as far as stuff like uh, receiving tithes and offerings during the service, we'll have baskets or boxes placed at the exits. Uh, so you can place your gift in there or when you arrive, before you leave, and we'll still continue to receive them the way we are now online, uh, which is fully functioning now, by the way. So if you would prefer to uh, give your gift, your tithes and offerings directly electronically, we are fully equipped and, and ready to do that. You can continue to drop it in our Dropbox, mail it, whatever way is comfortable and easy for you uh, in this time and frankly on into the future. You'll no doubt have more questions uh, about this in the days ahead. I mean, I still have questions. We're ironing this out. This is new territory. Paul didn't write anything in any of his letters about how to reopen a church after a pandemic. But there will be more details and information released either by email, social media. You may uh, receive phone calls or you'll even see videos perhaps on Facebook from me. Um, but this is the foundation for our plans going forward. And I, I want to stress to you that, remember, we, we act first out of love for God and one another. So as we move to reopen, we'll take the risk of harm to our friends, families, and, and our neighbors with the greatest sense of compassion and seriousness. I, I've said from the beginning that we consider this the same way we might consider a threat for inclement weather. Uh, you know, we, we take the threat serious, but we, pr we pray for clear skies. And so we will take the potential risk of, of the COVID-19 virus with, with great seriousness while praying that we are sort of out kicking our coverage with all of the steps we take as we re-enter into worship. Uh, again, you'll receive more information in the coming week. Uh, I'll hope to have a more detailed update for you next week uh, in virtual Vespers and hopefully something in print that you'll be able to sort of read and, and mull over a little bit more um, posted here and through our email chain. So those are the biggest sort of, I know that's a lot of information uh, to digest, but I did want you to know that we are working uh, towards a plan. We, we have sort of the bones of one, or I have sort of the bones of a plan now, and we want to flesh those out in the week, in the coming a week or two. So tonight, uh, as we come into the time of prayer, I want to uh, do what we did last week with this practice of Lectio Divina, particularly uh, with the psalm for this week. But as we come uh, together, I, I want us to begin our, our time with a prayer of invocation. So would you join me as we pray? Holy God, we are thankful for this time that we are able to come together virtually, Lord, to pray with one another, to be uh, virtually in one another's presence. God, we trust that, that we are in your presence, and as we are with you, as you are with us, and in your, your great power and mystery, we are together with one another. So Lord, as we come now this evening to listen to your Spirit speak through Holy Scripture, God, we pray for ears to hear, Lord, that we will listen, and we will be sensitive to your Spirit's voice that we will be sensitive to the ways that you speak to us, and Lord, that we will patiently wait as we listen in the days ahead for the ways that you will stir among us. Be with us in this time of prayer, we pray in Christ's name. Amen. So again, I, I'm coming to you from the, the foyer of the CMC, where worship will likely reopen uh, in the in the coming weeks, and I hope we'll see more things like this uh, this colorful um, um, collage from all of our kids. Uh, I know if if you've had any part of it, you probably recognize the part that you you did uh, for, for Nikki. And I want to say a special word right now about Nikki and all that she's been uh, doing for us and for our kids and our family uh, families in this time. That uh, we are very fortunate, very blessed to have. Uh, Nikki serving uh, on our church staff and in our community and uh, if, if Nikki happens to drop by your house and you catch her doing something for your kids for your family be sure to tell her thank you and how much you appreciate her in this time and then I, that you're praying for her uh, as well in fact I, I want to say that about our entire church staff uh, is this is a unique time for all of us 
uh, they are still working very hard to, to make sure that things are business as usual as they can be, uh, that, that our missions are being supported, the operation of the building and our future operations of ministries will run without a hitch. So Nikki to Peggy, Duncan, our daycare staff, uh, everybody here, Chris Cheatwood again, who's been just knocking it out for us to help us get to all this uh, going online. Uh, we, we, we're very grateful and blessed to have uh, this group of paid staff and volunteers who help us out so much. Now, tonight, uh, our psalm is the 66th psalm, particularly verses 8 through 20. And, and as we did last week uh, in this time of Lectio Divina, I'm going to read the passage three times, um, and at each time for you to listen for something uh, in that text for how God might be speaking. So this first time I want you to listen and, and think about what one word or phrase that God, the Holy Spirit, might be impressing on you, and then just meditate on that word or phrase for a while. So listen now as we read Psalm 66, verses 8 through 20 listening for that word, that phrase, that the Holy Spirit might be impressing upon you. Bless our God, O peoples. Let the sound of his praise be heard, who has kept us among the living and has not let our feet slip. For you, O God, have tested us. You have tried us as silver is tried. You brought us into the net. You laid burdens on our backs. You let people ride over our heads. We went through fire and through water, yet you have brought us out to a spacious place. I will come into your house with burnt offerings. I will pay you my vows, those that my lips uttered and my mouth promised when I was in trouble. I will offer to you burnt offerings of fatlings, with the smoke of the sacred sacrifice of rams. I will make an offering of bulls and goats. Come and hear all you who fear God and will tell what he has done for me. I cried aloud to him, and he was extolled with my tongue. If I had cherished iniquity in my heart, <coughs> excuse me, the Lord would not have listened. But truly God has listened. He has given heed to the words of my prayer. Blessed be God, because he has not rejected my prayer or removed his steadfast love from me. So again, what is one word or phrase that the Holy Spirit impresses on you in this text? Meditate on that. And now the second time through, I'm going to ask you to enter into the passage. What do you feel when you hear the psalmist's words? What specific situation in your life today relates to what you feel in that passage? Uh, at this time, if you have something close by to write down, you can write down a, a prayer or pray quietly about what you feel. But again, listen this time, enter into the passage and ask yourself, what do you feel? What specific situation relates to what you feel when you hear these words? Bless our God, O peoples, let the sound of his praise be heard, who has kept us among the living and has not let our feet slip. For you, O God, have tested us, you have tried us all as silver is tried. You brought us into the net, you laid burdens on our backs, you let people ride over our heads. We went through fire and through water, yet you have brought us to a spacious place. I will come into your house with burnt offerings. I will pay you my vows, those that my lips uttered and my mouth promised when I was in trouble. I will offer to you burnt offerings of fatlings with the smoke of the sacrifice of rams. I will make an offering of bulls and goats. Come and hear, all you who fear God, and I will tell you what he has done for me. I cried aloud to him, and he was extolled with my tongue. If I had cherished my iniquity in my heart, the Lord would not have listened. But truly God has listened. He has given heed to the words of my prayer. Blessed be God because he has not rejected my prayer or removed his steadfast love from me. So what do you feel when you hear this passage? And 
what specific situation in your life today relates to that feeling. Take time to write down a prayer or pray quietly about those feelings. Now finally, on the last time through, we, we listen for God's personal invitation in this scripture. What's God's personal invitation from you from this scripture? Again, if you have something to write down, you can write down what God may be saying to you or say a prayer of thanks or simply just rest quietly in the presence of God. Bless our God, O peoples. Let the sound of his praise be heard, who has kept us among the living and has not let our feet slip. For you, O God, have tested us. You have tried us all as silver is tried. You brought us into the net. You laid burdens on our backs. You let people ride over our heads. We went through fire and through water, yet you have brought us out to a spacious place. I will come into your house with burnt offerings. I will pay you my vows, those that my lips uttered and my mouth promised when I was in trouble. I will offer to you burnt offerings of fatlings with the smoke of the sacrifice of rams. I will make an offering of bulls and goats. Come and hear all you who fear God, and I will tell you what he has done for me. I cried aloud to him, and he was extolled with my tongue. I had cherished, and If I had cherished iniquity in my heart, the Lord would not have listened. But truly God has listened. He has given heed to the words of my prayer. Blessed be God, because he has not rejected my prayer or removed his steadfast love from me. What is God's personal invitation for you from the scripture today? Take a moment to write it down, reflect on it, or just rest quietly in the presence of God. And now, I want us to spend some time in prayer as we've been doing these Wednesday evenings praying for the church and tonight I specifically ask for your prayers for those of us who are now considering uh, how we reopen worship. Um, there are those who, as you probably well know, maybe you're among them, who, who think we should have reopened yesterday and that things will go back to normal in the blink of an eye. and. Perhaps you're those uh, who are, are just terribly concerned and unsure if everything will ever go back to normal. And there's a myriad of those of us in the middle, I think. And those of us, not only in um, the church leadership, but those who, who are responsible for making those decisions feel that pressure, feel that influence from all sides. So uh, I ask tonight that you pray for those of us who are seeking God's way forward. Uh, as best we can uh, with our deepest convictions for compassion and safety. Um, I ask that you pray for others. There's still uh, those who are struggling out there now, especially as we're, we're entering several weeks of this, those who have been without work, those whose uh, livelihoods have suffered. I ask that this evening you take some time to pray especially for them in ways that perhaps you can find even in your own uh, coming and going during these weeks uh, to support those who need your support financially and, and physically. And then, of course, to take some time to pray for ourselves as this is dragging on, but now things are reopening and uh, no doubt causing some anxiety and some uh, maybe even grief for some of us. So I want you to take some time to pray with me tonight about those three things. Pray for the church, for others, and for ourselves, and then I'll close this with the prayer uh, of benediction and the Lord's Prayer together. Uh, so let us pray. Eternal God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. 
Lord, as we are coming to a time uh, in this season when perhaps we can begin to make gradual steps towards normalcy, towards or life the way we hope it will be. God, we pray for discernment. We pray for your Spirit's guidance. We pray for your church, Lord, as it seeks to reopen for worship and service both here at Williams and around the world. And Lord, we pray for those who in the midst of this have been affected in ways other than their health. God, those who are worried about their jobs, worried about their livelihoods, God, we pray for them and, and ask, Lord, that whatever ways we may be able to help, or that you show us those ways and, and help us to do that. And Lord, the, this evening we pray for ourselves. God, that you be with us as we continue each and every day to, to face this strange season and all that comes with it. Help us to be patient. Help us to be compassionate. Help us, Lord, to be more and more like you. Help us, Lord, to grow into the likeness of Jesus, our Lord and Savior. The one, Lord, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever. Amen. I pray you have a good rest of the week, and that you will join us for worship online and that we will see one another very soon in the very near future.